Hi everyone, I hope you're doing well. I'm super excited to be back with another tutorial for you. And I know I'm gonna have a little bit of chit chat, so if you don't wanna hear it, just fast forward to there and that will be where the tutorial starts. Um, so today's design is gonna be like a rose princess design. And I'm gonna be using the Rosebud Fairy Fly Kit from Silly Farm. And I'm so annoyed because if you saw my last video, it was a review video and I totally forgot to put this in there. And the reason why that really annoys me is because I really like this. I've literally been using it every single day, or I'm sorry, at every single gig, every single day, that'd be a little bit crazy, but um, at every gig since Heather gave it to me. Heather gave it to me when I was there for Faba TV. So um, the reason why I like it is number one, it's freaking adorable. It's so cute. It has like, um, and they have all different kinds of them, but it has like the rainbow cake that you can use for backgrounds or one stroke. And then it has, um, ooh, I need to clean these, but it has little one stroke cakes you can use as well. And it's nice because it's compact and it's all right there. So I think that these are actually a very good option for people who are just getting into rainbow cakes, just getting into split cakes, and they're looking to build their collection um, because they have a lot of kits that will just give you everything you need to do a lot of different faces. Um, you can pretty much do tons of things with the rose colored one, princess crowns, butterflies. It's not just for roses. And of course, for the greens, you could do leaves, but you can also do like alligators and snakes and all sorts of things and then of course all masks for backgrounds um, and uh, butterflies and all that you can do with the rainbow one so there's a lot of uses in these little things um, if you're a stay-at-home mom and just want to get some stuff to play with for your kids these are a good option because it's pretty much everything you need so yay I like these a lot and um, let me show you some of the things or one of the things you can do with it so obviously if you don't have this, that's okay. You can use whatever colors you want. Um, but I'm going to be using the big rainbow cake section to do my background. And this just has golds and yellows and orange and a shimmery pink. I'm going to wet my sponge. And now I'm going to load it on the edge here. Now these are a little deep in the container. Um, but it's not a big deal. You just kind of squish your sponge in there to load it. You can bring it back and forth like that. Okay, so with the, I'm gonna put the pink side down first, just in the corner of eye, cutting through the eyebrow at about the arch right here. So I'm gonna place the sponge down right there and just pounce it at an angle, okay? And then I'm gonna curve it up and if you want to, if you want to make it bigger, you just flip it over, all right? And then you have, you know, more colors on there. So I got a little bit under my eye where I don't want it, so I'm just gonna wipe it off. It's not a big deal. And now in a rounded motion, I'm gonna come up and under my eye, and I'm gonna, you can have like the little girl look up while you're doing this a little bit hard to do on myself, but bring it up at an angle so it curves down and then goes up and meets the corner of the eye right there. So there's the first eye. I'm going to do the same thing over here and I'll be right back. All right, so I have my whole mask now. If you've noticed, I left a really big wide open space in the middle because I want there to be plenty of room for my roses. All right, now I'm going to do my roses. I'm going to be using a little rose split cake right here. And um, one thing I really like about this is I usually do my roses with red, pink, and white. Or, um, yeah, red, pink, and white. But this one's actually like a plum, red, and white. And um, you have to be careful because the white can get overwhelmed with it. But that deep plum adds really good contrast and it makes really pretty um, roses. Okay, I'm going to start on my rose and I'm going to try to keep it pretty small because I don't want this huge rose in the middle of my forehead. Um, with the white facing up, I'm just going to put my brush on its edge and pull up and down. And you're pretty much leaving just the edge on there, okay? So you're leaving your brush straight across when you do that. Now I'm going to touch that edge, uh, I'm going to go down just a little bit, touch the edge to the end right there, 
I'm going to swing the top of my brush out, pull in the edge, and there's the first side petal. You can do the same thing over here. Swing it out, pull in the edge. Okay, do it one more time for the final layer of petals. Go down here, touch it to the side, swing out the edge, and pull in. Oh! My gosh, I forgot to do the other part of the bud. Oh my goodness. Okay, rewind. So the first, I was like, why does this look funny? The first step is to do the top uh, loop. And then you do another one that goes down like that. And that'll give it, you know, that'll make it look like a bud. Okay, that's better. All right, I'm going to do the final um, petal, touch it to the edge, pull out the side, pull in that white tip, okay? So there's the rose, and I'm going to do two rose buds going up right here. Okay, so I'm going to do that same thing. Let's see, a loop. And then another one going down. Don't forget that again. Touch to the side, bring one petal in, touch it to the other side, bring the other petal in. And I'm going to do one more with just the loops. So the flowers are getting like smaller, like more and more closed up as you go up the crown. So I'm going to face it in towards this way. Do a top loop and a bottom loop. And that's it for that one. So I'm gonna do those two over here and I'll be right back. All right, so I have all of my roses done and now I'm gonna take the green cake from the Fairy Fly Kit and I wanna keep them pretty light so I'm just getting the very edge of my brush in that dark green, keeping most of the brush in the light green if you can see there. And I'm going to keep the leaves pretty simple um, just to help speed up the design. I'm going to do just one stroke for each leaf. Now I'm going to put the leaf at an angle, kind of following the angle of the rose. I'm going to put the light color up and then just press down, go sideways, and then up again. Do the same thing over here, so press down and lift up. Okay, now as the um, roses become smaller and smaller, um, you want to put their leaves, cover them more and more with their leaves, kind of like they're opening up out of their leaves. So the leaves this on this one are going to go up a little higher, not quite so to much the side, if that makes sense. So at that same angle, I'm going to press down and go up. So this one is hidden a little more by that leaf. Okay, and on the last one, even more so. So press down and just have the leaf follow right along that, that rosebud. Okay, and um, this might seem like it's taking a while, but believe me, once you get good with your roses, this is super duper fast. It does not take long at all. Now I'm just gonna quickly kind of connect them with, you know, stems just really lightly I don't want big fat ugly stems so just like that just really little all right so the rest of the design is going to be all white I'm using a number three low Cornell brush and um, some diamond effects white and I'm going to do a series of teardrops right over this rose so it's always hard to do this when it's in the middle of my forehead but the first one is going to go right here and then just get smaller and go down along the rows. So just little teardrops like that. Okay. All right, I'm going to do that same thing but going up. So I'm going to right in the center do the longest one. What? That was a little out of control, but whatever. We'll go with it. And then smaller ones going up this way. Right now I'm just going to do some swirls and curls to complete it. 
Um, starting from the corner of my eye, I'm going to do a curl going upwards. Go up, push down on my brush. You can do the same thing going the opposite direction here. Touch that same corner. Come out, do a swirl. And then coming from back here, I'm going to do another one coming up this way. And then just do little um, teardrops to kind of bring it up. So up like this. Okay. I'm going to do little teardrops here. One, two, three. And a little dot. And I'm going to put a little dot right here and bring a series, like a clump of teardrops in towards that. So the longest one will be directly horizontal from it right here. And you're going to bring that in and then just go down like that to fill in that space. All right, and now um, to finish it off, I'm just going to do some little dots of different sizes, framing the flower, and that'll help to kind of bring it all together. I'm going to repeat everything I did over there, over on this side. Okay, so I finished all of my swirls and teardrops, and I'm usually I just leave it like this because um, I try to go quickly. But if you have a little extra time and you want to make it a little bit more fancy, you can just put some dots. I always like to start in the biggest with the biggest dot in the middle, and then go smaller. So just go smaller until they kind of disappear like that. So put the biggest one right at the you know middle of your curve and then get smaller. All right, and you know what? I think this is looking kind of empty, so I'm just gonna do the same concept like the cluster of teardrops. I'm gonna kind of do it smaller here. So have the center one going in towards these two points. So just like that. And that kind of helps fill in that space. All right, last but not least, I'm going to put some glitter. So I'm going to do some on my eyelids down here. I think I'm just going to kind of keep it to the background. Um, generally, I don't like to put glitter on roses because I feel like it covers up all of their detail. And then you can't, it just looks like a, it turns it into a smudge of pink. So I'm definitely going to stay away from the roses. All right, so that's it. I hope that you guys like it and that you can use it at events soon. Um, it's definitely not something you're going to do if you have a huge line of people, but it's great for princess parties when you have a little more time with each child. If you haven't done so already, please rate, comment, and subscribe, and check me out on Facebook. I'm under Lisa Joy Young, and I will have links to the Fairy Fly Kit below and also all the products I used. Thanks, everybody. Bye.